Uh, welcome to our second pharmaceutical webinar at Avery Dennison for brand owners. Uh, thank you for your continuing interest. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how to select the right label material for your application. Your speaker today, similarly as last time, will be Benoit Jordan. Benoit is a senior BDM uh, for for uh, healthcare and uh, and pharmaceuticals. I will be your host. My name is Eva, and I'm a product manager for a pharmaceutical and healthcare at Avery Dennison. So please ask your questions in the field that you can see once you scroll down. Uh, also uh, in the main screen, you will be, we will be also asking some questions to you towards the end. You will see them in the poll option. So that's uh, the tab next to a question. I encourage you to answer because they will have an impact on the future webinars. Um, the chat box will be disabled uh, to, to avoid the confusion with questions. Uh, please keep in mind that all of the questions are visible to, to the public and also to the entire audience. So this webinar will be recorded and you will receive a slide deck and a recording within the next 48 hours. Uh, for the sake of time, if we will not be able to answer all of the questions, we will definitely get back to you offline after the webinar. And also the questions will be part of the recording. So today on the agenda, we will actually pick up where we left the last time. So we will briefly, we briefly already discussed the, uh, the difference between the standard labels and the pharmaceutical labels. Today we will take a deeper dive into this topic. We will be also uh, talking about how to understanding pharma applications and their unique specifications and requirements because those are different. In fact, they are different for, different for every industry. And then Benoit will take you through how to really match those specifications with the uh, appropriate face stock or adhesive. So now, uh, without further ado, Benoit, floor is yours. Thank you, Eva. Good morning. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, so, as you can see, for the time being, we have the video. I will switch it off in a few minutes to ensure that we keep a good network. But don't worry, when it will be time to say bye-bye, we will switch it on again. So, let's uh, start with a bit of basic from uh, what where we left the last uh, first uh, presentation we gave uh, already a few weeks back. We were ending and we were explaining the, the key difference between what we call a standard label material and a pharmaceutical label material. So I just want to spend a few minutes again to set the scene here. Standard labels, for sure, they are good material, no doubt. But they have a few limitations. When we think about this industry, what is unique to the pharmaceutical industry is what we call pressure sensitive penetration. Self adhesive labels have been adopted massively from the early days. And we speak here at least for 80% of decoration technology penetration. So this means that when 85 years ago, when the first self-adhesive label was live, the pharmaceutical industry has been adopted what was existing, general purpose, standard material. Those materials, within years, found their way in multiple applications, like personal care, like home care, food, beverage, industry, you name, you name, you name. Over time, as soon as you speak scale, you know the equation. It's always a balance between performance and cost. So we were forced, such as the industry, to make some continuous improvement, to always keep this, this right balance. And what the pharma industry has been telling us over time, no surprise, they don't like change. They like performance, but they don't want to see change. And if a change has to take place, that they will understand it because of legislation, they need, they want to be notified. So that's why a few years back, 10 years back, we have introduced pharma dedicated spec. So if we make a quick comparison, a standard label, once more, is a good material, but you will have limited technical requirements, specifically if you are looking for really precise features that pharma needs, like small diameter, sterilization. They have also a limited supporting documentation. Obviously, we have food approval, some other statement on reach. But if you are looking for low migration, if you are looking for cyto toxicology, we cannot carry this type of compliance for the standard material. And 
they have limited change management. Obviously, we are ISO. As such, ISO 9000, we have documentation for change management. But pharma is asking to another level. That's why, over time, we have seen this coming request for pharma spec that we will be discussing about today. Hmm? Uh, if I just uh, summarize a bit the commitment on those pharma dedicated material, we give a guaranteed availability on the pharma adhesive. The pharma adhesive is existing today, will still be there in uh, several years in the future. One year pre-notification in case of modification. Again, if legislation is asking us specifically rich to remove a component, we will be making the homework. We will notify your supplier the label converter, and we will give some validation report. And during this lapse of time of one year, you can still get, without any change, the current material. You have one year to assess. Is it a minor change? Is it a severe change? Do you need to requalify? And we bring as I said, validations via application test method, not only in our lab, but also in the field. So in terms of documentation also, we come with quite a lot huh? business continuity plan, risk assessment, validation and compliance that I will be illustrating uh, just now, giving you a bit more flavor of what we are doing. Compliance first, we have people dedicated to it. Uh, they are sitting for Europe in the HQ of the Netherlands. We can personalize any compliance statement. And the, the basic for pharma, everything around REACH, ROHS, the food regulation, that I will say is something that we share with all the other industry. But then back to pharma, you have ISO norms. You have the 10993 for cytotoxicology. You have this ISO 3826 for blood bags migration. And then uh, so following the FMD that has been uh, live uh, already, one year ago, 2019, we are equipped also to, to make uh, any test against uh, the EN 16679 and the 21976. But more to come. Medical device regulation, because of the current uh, pandemic, it has been postponed to next year. But already we start issuing some statement uh, on this one. Back to testing, it's about first people. We are R&D colleagues sitting in the different labs, and we have also technical field support that together with your supplier's label converter can support you to determine the preferred material for your application. We do standard tests like FINAT. FINAT is part of the, this is the European Association for Self-Adhesive Label. But over time, we have developed our own application-based test method specifically once more in the HQ of the Netherlands. And with that in hand, as we speak, we are building a certified lab. We are, we will be ISO 17025 certified, the target is next year. And this is something that we bring towards this industry. We are running already tests for big pharma within this, this chapter of, of uh, performance and compliance. And we can adapt specific performance requirements Something that we are doing on a regular basis is extract tables, you know, just to give you an illustration. So before we start in the depth, uh, do we have any questions, uh, Eva? No, there is no questions for now. OK. So now, obviously, the topic of the day, huh? it all starts with a pressure sensitive adhesive. So when you have an application, you know, we, Everdinson, as you know, we have invented the self-adhesive label. Stan Avery did that uh, back 28, five years ago. What is unique to Everdenison in that industry is that we are formulating and we are manufacturing our own adhesives. So we have more than seven R&D centers around the globe with a bit more than 400 scientists that are working on adhesive and, and more. But back to pharma, the global head for R&D is sitting in Europe. And again, we are capable to develop formulations of all the existing chemical platforms for adhesive, being emulsion, hot melt, and solvent. And once we have them, we don't rely on a third party to produce them. We are manufacturing them locally on the different continents. So we can really speak about some global platform 
we will, you will hear soon about S6 and 2 NP that we are producing locally ourselves in the different continent. And this is typically a value prop that is resonating for, for the big pharma. So where are you starting when you have to select the right adhesive? First, obviously, it's about the substrate. It's about on what do you want to apply the label. So the first consideration you will have to ask yourself is about the roughness of that substrate. Because self-adhesive material are viscoelastic material. They will be flowing, we speak about weight out, to be able to follow the surface you're going to apply stick to. As you can imagine, if you have a glass or if you have cardboard, like uh, applying a temper evident label, this will not be the same equation to solve, right? A cardboard being extremely rough, you need to make sure that you have an adhesive with a good weight out. People currently are summarizing that with soft enough so that you get the right weight out and the right contact, maximizing the contact. Second question is the surface energy of the surface. And this one, you know, this is applicable to, to everything. You know, think about uh, your car. If you go washing your car at the gas station, typically they put a specific treatment on the, on the windshield. And as soon as you get a bit of rain, the tiny uh, droplet doesn't want to stay. They are surfing and they are moving away. Because, once more, the surface tension is very low. We speak about low surface energy and the droplet does not want to stick. Exactly the same with an adhesive. Some adhesive will be dedicated to the easy polar surface like glass. Some other will be dedicated to more difficult surface like plastics. And in that industry, we see the rise also of plastics for syringes because of the challenge with the compatibility with biologic. So here, like the COP, COC, the cyclic olefin polymer and the cyclic olefin copolymer, you need to adapt the right adhesive to be able to, to stick on low surface energy. But it's not over. Huh? Roughness, surface energy, the last point is also what will be the cohesion of your adhesive. Because at the end, if you want to remove a label, this is a performance of the weight out, the cohesion of the adhesive, and the polarity. Another question also you need to ask yourself right away, temperature. Application temperature and service temperature. Application temperature, as you can imagine, at what temperature do you apply, do you stick to the substrate? And service temperature, once the label has been applied, what will be the temperature for the life of the container? Uh, just uh, and I give you an example, uh, cryogeny. Typically, you apply a label at room temperature in the lab, and then uh, once it's finished, uh, you bring everything, the test tube, to uh, liquid nitrogen down to minus 200 degrees C. So application temperature is 23, service temperature minus 200 degrees C. So those, whatever you do, and to be clear, it's not just for pharma. Whatever the application you will have to work on, those are the first criteria you, you need to explore. But for pharma, we have slightly more. First one, mandrel. You know, what is unique to pharma is a small diameter. So you need to bear that in mind. You know, what is the diameter of the surface, of the cylindric surface? And, and again, mandrel hold out is the ability of the label to stay, adhere to a bar, to a cylindric surface. Initial tech also is important, specifically if you speak about high speed uh, dispensing application. And another, point linked to this race of plastics is low migration. You need to make sure that the label material you're going to select answer to standards when it comes to compliance on migration. And to finish sterilization, so we speak about temperature or radiation or gas. This is also another criteria that you have to, to bear in mind. Compliance, we already spoke about it in the intro. Here, I will just insist that we have some of our global pharma adhesive in the FDA drug master file. And as such, we can issue a letter of access for you, the big pharma, to get all information without spending months with us trying to sign an NDA. And this is definitely something at global level that is facilitating adoption and evaluation of our material. 
to finish efficiency productivity uh, we see more and more an increase in the speed for dispensing way above the 500 bottles per minute and associate to it uh, also sometimes you have specific need for inline label detection the label itself need to have some luminescence uh, capability that we can add or that the label converter can add uh, directly on the surface so before we move now to the different adhesives do we have uh, any questions uh, eva uh, yes benoit so a uh, question here it's uh, how do we test for mandrel performance so in general we use the finap testing method so this is the ftm24 so labels are placed on rods tubes uh, they can maybe a glass polypropylene polyethylene depending on what is needed afterwards they do have a 16 hours dwelling time after which the label lift is measured However, in Avery Denison, we also make a pharma-specific mandrel testing where we use smaller diameter roads. So even da down to seven millimeters, we are also uh, having a different aging times. So we are using the dwell time of 24 hours, 48 hours, one week, two weeks, even one month. We can also uh, apply different uh, temperatures. So let's say the aging um, programs so, of course, low temperature, high temperature in our chambers. Also, a uh, fun fact, uh, with one of our testing machinery suppliers, we developed a special mandrel testing machine, which allows us also to uh, test the mandrel halt on any substrate. So, also with the products that, are su that will be submitted by you in a very accurate way. Okay. Thank you, Eva. I also have uh, another Please. question. Please. Uh, regarding pharma industries, do you have solutions for tamper evident materials? If yes, uh, please, some examples and technical data sheet will be great. Uh, so, yes, Gabriel, we do have uh, special tamper evident materials. We are generally working uh, among uh, three different uh, tamper evidence systems. So, this is box damage, so fiber tear, uh, label damage, so a label that will, uh, that will fall apart if you will try to uh, remove it, and also visible marks, so those are the type of void materials. And of course, the TDS, we will get back to you offline with the TDS. Okay, thank you, Eva. Thank you. So now, giving you a bit more illustration of the first uh, adhesive family I was introducing uh, before, emulsion acrylic. So today, if you look at the overall industry, emission acrylic uh, are the vast majority of self-adhesive out there. So to, to, what do they bring to pharma? First, good mandrel performance. Excellent clarity. Huh? They are known for their no label look. Good temperature resistance, easy dispensing, and they have the ability uh, to resist to pretty high temperature for autoclave. So here you have a, a few, a few uh, names you may be already familiar in terms of Averdenison adhesive, like the S2000NP. This is your entry, let's say, um, uh, adhesive, good for standard bottles, but also pretty good for uh, test tubes. After that, you have the S692NP. This one is the one for low migration application, but also the one for application where you have a container that is a, a plastic, squeezable plastics. And we see a lot for syringe, for the small diameter. 717P, this is one version that has been specifically developed for low surface tension or treated surface. It can be either a glass with a specific treatment on the surface, or it can be the polymer COP, COC. It keeps for the rest the properties of s 6 p in terms of good uh, migration. That's why we see also this adhesive for good mandrel on C range. And a special animal, let's say the C2020P, this one is dedicated for frozen surface. You know, if you want to apply on a, a plasma a bag that is stored in frozen uh, area, this one is not a, only able to stick at those types of temperature, but also to survive in those in those environments. So here, if you wish, this is, I will say, emulsion acrylic, a big growing market also for, for pharma. Aside, you have uh, another family, still more a niche family, but comes with unique uh, features. Rubber base, 
either hot melt, basically we just e use heat to warm the rubber and to be able to get something viscous that we can apply on the web. Excellent uh, humidity resistance, uh, good low temperature performance, and the weight out is fantastic. So if you have a rough surface, this is definitely what you need. So if you speak about some uh, bottles a bit rough, plastic, this is the one you need. Servant rubber, they just bring performance of the hot melt to another level. Even better on humidity resistance, even better for low temperature application. And this one can survive sterilization. Whereas, as you can understand, hot melt rubber, we use it to process, to make it viscous. So it will not survive uh, autoclave sterilization. It will be too soft. Okay. So th those uh, rubber solvent rubber have been uh, around for years, years. So S451, for instance, is uh, uh, an heritage uh, adhesive that we are selling for more than 30 years in that industry. And you find a lot of old spec in this market using the S451. We're going to move now to the last family, the solvent acrylic. Basically, all stars, huh? they, are, they are the best because they are good everywhere. Very good in Mandrel. Excellent chemical resistance, moisture resistance, and temperature resistance. Obviously, no issue for sterilization at all. And they are very good for, for dispensing. Uh, as you know, as everything, it's always a, a question of compromise. Uh, because this will, will also come with a cost. S697, this is a, a legacy adhesive for syringe. S700 is even bringing to another level with extremely high cohesion that make it suitable for hang labeling. L171, special animal dedicated for blood bags. So here, not only you have to care about the migration, but also you need to be sure that the adhesive can survive all the centrifugation and all the temperature shock that a, a blood bag will see in his life. So real here, unique adhesive for almost that unique purpose. And uh, back to the question we got on uh, temper evident, seal labeling, the 799P has been developed for that purpose to adhere with a good weight out to cardboard and even rough or varnish cardboard. So this is what has been developed specifically to answer the falsified medicine directive uh, one year ago. To finish, an adhesive design for extremely low temperature. I speak here for both application temperature. We can apply the C2050P down to minus 50. And the service temperature is down to cryogenic. This is pretty recent as a development, but this is also a request by uh, the vaccine uh, clinical trials industry that more and more is using extreme temperature for the storage and to some extent partially for the manufacturing. So you need to adapt uh, to come up with the right type of adhesive. So, you know, we are still developing uh, solutions to fulfill to the new requirements because this industry is also is evolving slowly, but we, we are coping with it. So now the exercise we're gonna do, we're gonna bring back and gonna mix all together those different adhesive platform. And we are trying to position now, I would say the core pharma adhesives. We start with S2000NP, you will see at the bottom of the screen, uh, we are also reminding you some performance on Mandrel, so the ability to stay on a small diameter, the tack on glass and the tack on plastics. But please don't take too fast a shortcut. This is not because you will see that an adhesive might not be that fantastic on tack on plastic, that you should not be using it for an application on plastics, because you need to differentiate immediate adhesion, quick stick, and long-term adhesion, okay? And specifically here on Mandrel. So we have applications where they can cope with pretty low initial tack because what they care, once the label has been properly applied, is that the label will stay after months, even on a very tiny diameter. Okay. So as I said, starting point, S2000NP, good on Mandrel, good on glass, descent on plastic. Then 2045 NP, remember, 
2045 INP is a rubber base, hot melt. So fantastic in terms of uh, ability to stick on glass and plastic. Mandrel, because of lack of cohesion, will be borderline. As for Phi 1, lack a bit 2045, but one level up because it's a solvent rubber. <clears throat> so very good glass, very good plastic, <clears throat> sorry, and uh, pretty good on Mandrel. Then we move to the Blockbuster S692NP. So this one, for low migration, for clarity, uh, one of the best, so typically syringes. And you see, <clears throat> Mandrel is good, tack on glass, tack on plastic is medium. But this one, we are selling a hell of a lot on syringes. S717P for more difficult type of surface, you know, the polymer, but also any treated surface. Uh, can be any uh, silicone spot or specific treatment that has been applied uh, to perhaps uh, improve the efficiency on the, uh, on the production line. Mandrel, outstanding. Tack on glass, tack on plastic, medium. And to finish, this one is solvent, S6970, S697 that we have been speaking about. You know, this one works basically uh, everywhere. Uh, just be careful perhaps for initial tack on plastic. So, you know, excellent uh, humidity, chemical, uh, heat resistance and efficiency. So here you see we have been trying to position because this you have to bear in mind. Don't start with <clears throat> what is the, the technology of the adhesive start with the characteristics, with the features that this adhesive brings. And then you might discover this adhesive is emulsion, or this adhesive is solvent, or this adhesive is rubber-based oatmeal. Okay. That's why we have been repositioning here all the adhesive one after the other. Eva, do we have a few questions uh, here? Uh, yes, in fact, we do have some questions. Uh, quite interesting uh, one from, uh, from Alan. There is a new FDA requirement to have a peel-off section on a vial label that uh, can be attached to the syringe being used for the injection. Can you recommend how to test a peel-off section on a syringe that may only be on the syringe for no longer than four hours? So I would say that here this is a kind of a mandrel testing, but a very specific one. I would say that definitely we would have to develop uh, application testing that would mimic as, as closely as possible the, the conditions, so also the humidity, the temperature, and of course the four hours dwell time. Preferably also make the test based on the labels that we will receive, the, the ready labels, so the labels that will be converted by your supplier, so by our customer. and. Uh, and then I, I think this, this this could be a suitable way to test it. Of course, we will also get back to you offline because uh, definitely an interesting question uh, for uh, our R&D department. Yeah. <clears throat> and perhaps just to add, indeed, the equipment we have uh, in, in the central lab allow us today to, 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 to apply and to measure properly, uh, minimizing uh, bias linked to individual. Even when it is applied not only on a standard bar, but directly on a syringe on a vial. Uh, but here, as you speak about a bit uh, seal and uh, you need to measure the force, we will have also to customize a bit uh, the system. Okay. Yes. I have one more from Please. Bert. Uh, is the S799P suitable for water-based uh, varnish as well as the ink-based varnish? So. Benoit, you want to answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. S, uh, so S717P, uh, because, right, it was about S717P, the question, right? Or... S799P. Ah, okay. So, S799P has been first developed for varnish base uh, folding box. Okay. And this is where you will maximize for sure the performance. We have seen also that it can also work on UV varnish. But just be careful, UV varnish is just more difficult. Uh, but the criteria when we have developed what we call a CTQ, critical to quality, was to develop a solution for water-based varnish that is a vast majority of the varnish used for the pharmaceutical folding box. Okay? Yeah. 
I can only add to this that also they are different type of the temper evidence. So also for the var different varnishes that maybe the lay the uh, fiber tier is not working so well, you can always uh, think of using the destructible labels or uh, or, or avoid marking. Uh, yeah, yeah, Eva, you're right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, fiber tier is not as such a universal solution. <clears throat> you always have to look about the equation, the quality of the board, the nature of the varnish, and then you have to test. But if you ch start changing one of those layers, you might have different results, clearly. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> let's carry on. Uh, as you can understand, the overall label performance is not only driven by the adhesive, but at the end, what you, you buy from Everdenison via the label converter, it's a self-adhesive laminate. You have a face stock and you have an adhesive. And clearly, the face stock is contributing to the performance. So, <clears throat> first question that people are asking, you know, film versus paper. Uh, everything has start with paper. Uh, so paper is still uh, very common in that industry. Typically, white paper that has a semi-gloss finish that comes with a pretty decent opacity. So this is uh, the entry solution, the more cost competitive, and you still see that on plenty of application, ampules, uh, lab samples uh, for uh, test, test tubes, you, you name. Films, clearly, has been growing extremely fast and in some applications, I will even say as replace uh, paper, you have the benefit of the transparency and the high gloss level is also contributing to the nice shelf appeal. And by reducing the caliper, you can go pretty, pretty low in terms of caliper. Therefore, combining films on top of each other is possible and offer you the options of multi-layer labels. Uh, it can be dual label, it can be the booklet, but more and more for syringe, <clears throat> we see those complex design that have uh, different layers uh, and it's much easier with a film that is thinner and thinner means less stiffness. Less stiffness means better performance on small diameter, better mandrel performance. <clears throat> That's why, you know, film is more recommended if you are looking for small diameters. Film has a benefit to resist to temperature and to moisture and uh, the conformability uh, and squeezability. Squeezability, ice drop type of uh, plastic bottles. If you do that with a paper, after pushing and pushing, uh, you will get pleats and you will certainly get uh, edge lift. A film will survive. And film can manage without any issue also high speed dispensing like paper. So that's why you see a lot of films on syringes, pre filled syringes, uh, security seals because they have they can also help you to tear so you know films is getting more and more popular and you will see that uh, a bit later in the overall product portfolio we are offering so now i'm going to zoom a bit more with a few names on portfolio for, for paper face to start so typically you know the, the key paper in terms of basis weight they are 60 grams per square meter, like the MC Pharma and the LW. Semi-gloss finish, pretty good opacity. So you see them you know, in standard bottles. Uh, you can also go down to some uh, pretty small diameter because the stiffness is decent. Uh, we speak about 60 grams per square meter uh, paper. LW will bring you more because it will have a better opacity. It will have also <clears throat> the ability to give you better aesthetics with better characters for printing. That's why this LW is a market standard today when it comes to paper. Then you have some other type of paper that have some limitation if you go too far in terms of the application. MC Prime Coat, this is 80 grams per square meter. So even, you know, if he has the look and feel of the MC Pharma, it's a semi-gloss, the stiffness will be a limiting factor if you want to go too small in terms of diameter. So if you want to apply on a flat surface, uh, there is no issue at all. This is a very good product. Uh, it typically use a lot also for identification labels because you can also print with thermal transfer. By the way, all of them, MC Pharma, LW, MC Prime Code. But for some application where transfer, where thermal transfer is a must, we are looking for ultimate performance. We have transfer superior, uh, velum transfer, matte finish. Those one 
forget for small diameter. They are good for flat surface, including bags. So even if it's not totally uh, flat uh, and you have a bit of, of a 3D uh, design, so extremely popular uh, for uh, variable information to be applied on a pouch, on a bag. Uh, we see more and more of those uh, applications because of the medical device industry. So now, obviously, after paper, I will be moving to film. Uh, films, uh, the blockbuster, the, the star is PP, polypropylene, in different caliper, historically uh, around 60 micron. And over time, it's going down, specifically, as I told you, for uh, multi-layer, we can go down to 30. Benefit of PP, like a film, uh, very good clarity, very good gloss, suitable for small diameter. Once more, uh, C-range uh, will, will be the one. PE, not that popular, but for some application where you need the squeezability, huh? again, the eyes drop, PE is the best, <clears throat> much better than PP in his ability to get squeeze. And the stiffness also, you know, is pr pretty stiff. And huh? we speak between 80 to 80 gram, 80, sorry, micron. <clears throat> but his conformability and squeezability allow even having this type of uh, eye caliper to do the job on descent diameter. PET, ultra clear, but the key advantage is very high temperature resistance. You know? So be careful also about the, the, the caliper. Uh, <clears throat> nothing above 50 micron, otherwise it will be too stiff. But you know, if people in general they start with PP, but if they are looking for more transparency and specifically much better temperature resistance, this is where you have to use PET. Okay. Use a lot in a uh, laboratory in hospitals for oncology, where uh, you will have a bunch of treatment, including chemical treatment. PET will be uh, more suitable. Then we have copolymers. It's in between. It's a blend between the PP and the PE to, to make short. Fantastic in terms of conformability. They come with a satin finish, but their advantage is low temperature application. Because obviously, the, the lower you go in temperature, the higher the stiffness of the film will be. But here with a copolymer, you can still manage to apply down to minus 50. If you take a PP, it will be a bit stiff, even brittle. A copolymer can cope with those extreme temperatures. Uh, it will have some other perhaps downside uh, in terms of sterilization because it does not like that much high temperature. But he found his niche, and uh, because of this growing interest for cold chain, uh, it's getting more and more popular. To finish, PVC. PVC is still there. You know, Pharma is one of the last industry still in love with PVC for blood bags. You know, there is, at this stage, uh, you have some alternative, right, uh, with synthetic paper. But PVC has a huge history of adoptions within this industry of blood bag. And it can also bring some additional features for security. You make a fantastic destructible film for tamper evident with PVC. And so that's why you, you, you see it, security, blood bags, some flexible packaging. But I will say it's a special big, but still niche uh, market nowadays. So, here, we're going to speak uh, to finish about a few product codes, laminate, where you will see the face and the adhesive combined. So just to let you know, you have here some QR codes that will bring you to some product uh, <coughs> sheets that we have on small diameter, on cold chain, on pharma security. So don't, don't worry, I will not leave you alone to discover and to be perhaps surprised by so much information at once. I will drive you through a few examples. So if you open the cold chain labeling solution, among other, you will end up with our solutions for cryogeny application. So you see, we, we have five of them. So I want to bring you through the exercise. Let's focus on the first free one. You see, they are all using this adhesive S2196, combined with a PP top white for the first, PP light top clear for the second, and PP95 matte white for the third. So remember what we said, the way to select the right material. We spoke about temperature. <clears throat> what is my application temperature? What is my service temperature? And this is what you see here. 
Minimum application temperature. You see, for those three, as they are using the same adhesive, it's plus 10. Good. So I know that I can apply that in a lab environment because I can apply down to 10 degrees C. Then my service temperature, minus 200 plus 120. So if I'm looking for a solution for cryogeny, if I'm looking for a solution that also I can sterilize, here I see it works. This adhesive seems fitting this, this request. And uh, if I carry on with autoclav sterilization, I get that confirmation. Huh? And why? S2196 is a solvent acrylic. And we have seen that solvent acrylic are very good chemical resistance and also very good temperature resistance. So it does the job. You see here, chemical resistance, we have also a click. But what is now interesting, look at small diameter application, the, line, the last column. We see that the two first one are appropriate, but the last one is not appropriate. Why? We are using for the free the same adhesive, S2196. The difference is a phase stock. For the two first one, it's a 50 micron polypropylene. Pretty, I will say, slim, not very stiff. The last one is a 95 micron polypropylene. It's too stiff. So if you want to apply that on a small diameter on a test tube, you take a risk. So this is where you see the combination of the face plus the adhesive. At the end, the performance is a combination of the two. And if we, if we go further down, just to finish on the last two adhesives, you see like the C0196, the line number four. Again, same service temperature, but a different application temperature. You can go down to minus or 30 degrees C. So if you are in a lab environment, and you need to manipulate your samples at freezing temperature, you cannot use the 2196. You have to use the C0196. For the rest, you see the same. Same temperature resistance, same uh, small diameter application, it does the same. And if now you go, you want even more, the last one, the C2050P, you see application temperature minimum minus 50. So this one, you can apply on deep, almost dry ice type of application. Obviously, uh, watch out about the condensation, depending at what temperature you, you, you will be when you will be applying. But this one, if you want to stick on something that is that cold, you have no other choice. The one we have seen before will not do the job. Okay? So just to give you another example, and uh, this will be the last examples, if you look at the other small diameter labeling solution uh, product uh, sheet that was linked to the QR code. Small diameter, so you know, don't be afraid with uh, so many information, I will, I will drive you through uh, quickly. First, you see, we speak here only about paper. Hmm? They are all paper, we see the click here. But what is interesting, the basis weight of those paper, the vast majority is around 60, but a few are much thicker, 80. What this right away should bring to your mind, be careful about the implication for small diameter. So let's jump right away for small diameter. You have here Mandrel hold on glass and Mandrel hold on uh, plastic, because again, polarity, as we have heard, play a role. So if we look about a uh, descent diameter above the 20 millimeter, we see they all work. All the self-adhesive combination you have of a face plus an adhesive do the job when the diameter is not too narrow. As soon as you start reducing the diameter, 10 for instance, you see that the paper with the basis weight around 80 cannot do the job. There is too stiff. Even if, again, the adhesive might be suitable, but the combination adhesive face uh, make uh, this application risky. And this, you know, you, you can see the same huh, for glass or for uh, plastic. The only difference, typically for glass, you can find diameter much, much smaller and down to seven millimeter that you will not find today for the plastics. That's why you have a slightly different scale. Uh, and now if we look at the adhesive, you see here, we find uh, usual suspect we already spoke about. S2000NP, S692NP. So those adhesives, as we said, can be emission acrylic, can be different types. So I'm going to look at one, autoclave. 
why don't we have autoclave valid on the second line? Remember, here we have S2045NP. It's rubber-based hot melt. Rubber-based hot melt don't like high temperature. So if you go to 120 plus, you take a risk. That's why we don't have the link here. Okay. <clears throat> Low temperature, you have also the criteria we spoke about. You know, we say that, for instance, uh, S451, that is rubber-based, but with solvent, give pretty good uh, performance on low temperature. You can stick down to chill surface. That's why we have flagged that. Okay. So, you know, I can spend hours uh, on this one, but I can perhaps give you another example. If you go to the extreme on mandrel on glass, small diameter, seven millimeter, you see here, you are reducing the, the number of your candidates. Uh, uh, S2000NP can be a good candidate, uh, but the best will be definitely perhaps the S717P uh, because those type of applications are extremely difficult. And specifically, if on top of glass, you have a specific treatment on the surface, uh, be, be careful. So I think I will stop here to give illustration about, uh, you know, what, what uh, illustrating a bit of portfolio. Uh, I just would like to, to hear, Eva, do we have more questions? Uh, yes, in fact, we do have two questions. I would like to uh, answer them uh, fast. It's um, with what phase stock combinations are the adhesive S717P, S451, S799P, and S692NP? I see that Gabriel Christian is a specialist of our adhesive. Uh, only with clear phase stock, or they are available also with metallized phase stock? So here, uh, those adhesives, they are really available with a variety of paper and filmic faces, PP, PET faces. Now for the metallization part, um, and I don't know from the top of my head if we do have something in our portfolio. However, I can ensure you that we have the mix and match services. Those are the custom customization services. So there you can really combine any face stock with, uh, with metallized adhesive or a white film or, yeah, to... This is a really, let's say, that the combinations are endless. You can always reach to our uh, technical sales uh, representative and then they will help you out with this one. Okay, Eva. Uh, second one, I have uh, many, many pharma customers are asking for RPET, RPE and RPP. As a, raw, as a raw material supplier, do you feel this as well? Uh, so here, just to quickly answer, um, we do see an increased interest in, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, this, this type of materials that are uh, recycled materials. They are, of course, some customers, they are more sustainability driven than the others. But uh, we are looking actively also for projects. So uh, because we really want to gain also experience in, in, in this type of materials for the pharmaceutical applications. So if you do have any projects, please, please feel free also to reach to us. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Eva. Yeah. Uh, will you be able to to uh, allow us to bring the camera on? Uh, so, just perhaps to to conclude, uh, um, I was explaining that we have those product overview available to you. Uh, we have also a bit more. We have a, a nice uh, summary uh, dedicated to pharmaceutical labeling solution. Uh, it's a bit of guide. I invite you also to download. <clears throat> you will also once more get the same approach, you know, in terms of the different considerations for pharmaceutical applications that we were explaining. And you will find an overview about the different adhesives, different face stocks, but also you will be able to see more liner. We have not been speaking over the past uh, minutes about uh, the release liner that can also play a role specifically for the application. You will find more details uh, over there, such as all the sterilization uh, information. Okay. On that, i hand over to you, Eva, for a bit of uh, conclusion. Yes. So, um, indeed, thank you very much, Benoit, for, for, for this interesting webinar. And thank you all for listening, of course. We will be taking now a summer break from our webinars. So, um, so we will see you back in September. 
and what will be the topic that's up to you so i activated a poll you can scroll down uh, to the question box there you can also see polls i highly encourage you to vote and this will be also our topic of the next webinar so here you can choose uh, maybe we, you want us to take a deeper dive into the intelligent label so rfid solutions maybe more about the regulatory compliance so also uh, those topics or just speak about also brand protection security labeling solutions so indeed those uh, tamper evident but also anti-counterfeit uh, features or maybe you are interested in sustainability so of course uh, those uh, rpps rpe and this type of materials so for now i see that uh, not everyone still <coughs> voted, but from this, what I see, we have a clear preference for security labeling solutions. Yeah, so looks like indeed. I guess uh, the only thing that I can do is just invite you for the next webinar about uh, security uh, labeling solutions. Uh, yeah. So thank you again for your attention, your interest. Yeah. Uh, we wish you a nice summer and we hope to see you again uh, in September. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you again. Yep. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.